the glare, and I, yeah, I resemble that remark. It's okay. I'll get over it. But because you want to be certain your hard-earned dollars are going to that which you and your family truly need. Harness your power by retaining your ability to identify your own priorities and needs. Quietly and calmly go about addressing those priorities and needs. Exiting the mainstream madness of keeping up with the advertiser's vision of what your life should look like will reduce your stress. It will increase your financial stability. It will reduce your anxiety. It will open up possibilities you were previously unaware of. And here's the good part. It will increase your peace, your joy, your love, and your contentment. Now that's a new year, new you. You could really appreciate, right? If you got over feeling constantly pressured, buy this, buy this, get that, do this, listen to this, react to that, respond to this, and you quieted it down, even by half. And you scrolled past it. Or you didn't scroll at all. Or you didn't look at the ads. Or you muted them on TV. How much more peace would you feel? How much money would you save? And by saving money, how much more stable would your life feel? Instead of worrying about if I got a flat tire on the way to work, I don't have enough money in my account to call a tow truck. You'd have enough money in your account to call a tow truck. You could have enough money in your account to be set in case life throws you one of those curveballs, which life throws every single one of us. Every once in a while. Life's a pretty good picture. But the rest of the time, you, my friend, are the batter. You get to pick. Which pitch am I going to swing at? Can I jump back from the plate before that ball hits me in the hip? You get to be the one who picks. Okay? So I want you to know. When you reduce your spending, when you reduce your listening to the power mongers or brokers or the advertisers, you can save money. Money that will ensure your very survival if there's a hiccup in your life or your job, a falling out of your key relationship, or the natural progression of time that renders you able to retire. And you want to be financially ready for that. How many of us are looking straight into the eyes of working forever because we didn't identify our wants versus our needs? And how many of you that are already retired are hauling your grandkids around every single day? And you're buying them what they scream for just to make them be quiet. Think about what you're teaching them. I scream, you buy. I scream, you buy. I scream, you buy. You buy, you buy, you buy, you buy. Who's going to buy for you when that grandkid is 18? How about they scream, you take them out to the car? How about they scream, you say no? Three times out of five. It's just a thought. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just offering you options. But if you reduce what you spend and you reduce your ability to be maneuvered and manipulated by the advertisers, by the influencers, by social media, by the people that want to guilt trip you, you could put yourself 
into a lot better position. Now, I'm not talking about people that got struck by tragedy or hardship or loss. Those people hold a very special place in my heart because I know what it's like to be struck by loss. I know what it's like to sit on the living room floor and count your quarters that you were saving because you didn't want to cart them around in your purse and take those quarters to the gas station and put gas in your car so that you can go to the funeral of the person that you just lost. I know what that's like. And that's why my heart feels for those people. But I'm talking about those who are conforming to a societal norm that requires excess spending in order to be cool or whatever today's buzzword is. Really? Do you really have to have a certain pair of shoes, a certain purse, a brand new car, the latest phone? Really? I'm here to tell you, you can survive just fine without them. You really can. I do it every day. Oh, I do have one really pretty purse, but it was a present and it's 10 years old. I still carry it though. <laughs> Because it's really pretty and I like it. But it's not brand new. And it was a gift. I didn't pay for it. But I'm just saying. If you have gotten yourself into this mind thought. That I'm going to watch the Super Bowl just for the end. So that I can go online and buy something. That I don't even have room in my house to put it. There's something wrong with this picture. <laughs> I'd love to run an ad on TV that says, click here on this app. Transfer 50 bucks to your own savings account. Click now. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> click again tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. But every single time you see one of those ads and you're thinking about responding, remember, somewhere behind that ad, is a person or a company or an entity that not only paid for that ad, but they are deriving profit from your responding to it. And then ask yourself one more time, do I want it or do I need it? And if you want it, then ask yourself, do I have at least six months? of emergency savings? Do I have everything I need in place for financial stability? If the answer is yes, then you still want it and you can afford it, great. Blessings. But if the answer is no, button up your shoelaces, pull them a little tighter, stand yourself up, dust yourself off and give yourself a strict talking to goes like this. Self, I have determined I don't really need that. I don't actually have the money for it. So I'm turning the TV off now. I will have to come back later. Let's go take a walk. And that's what you do with your fine self. And remember, I like entertainment as much as anyone. Here's one thing that just kills me. Of course, it was just Super Bowl. But is an entertainer or sports team truly worth a multi-million dollar salary and a millionaire lifestyle when the ticket buyers are limping along financially? How many people spent 2500 bucks on a ticket to the Super Bowl, plus airfare, plus hotel, plus food, plus souvenirs, blah, 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 when they don't have six months in savings? That's a little bit messed up, more than a little bit, okay? So only you can reclaim your own power. And this is why the evolution of power is a money issue. It's going to be different for each one of you because each one of you have a different money issue, a different trigger, a different attitude, a different income level, 
You're at a different stage in your life. Every single one of you is individual. So you need to make your plan that fits your need. And I urge you to get started on the basics of that plan right away. And what's the key question again? Exactly. Do I want it or do I need it? I want you to have the best life possible. Do what you're good at. Do it well. Do it with joy and you'll have a good life. And don't get suckered in by these power mongers that want to take your money up, down, sideways. Do you want it or do you need it? And now, you know what I'm going to say before I say it. Because we've come to the end of our time together. If you need me, reach out. I will help you formulate your individual plan. It's rcmoneycoach.com. And there's a little contact us button. Or you can email me directly, Rhonda, R-O-N-D-A, at RC Money Coach. Until next time, be grateful, and you will attract good things. I'm Rhonda Cobb, the Money Coach, and thank you for joining us today.